Joining me now is Daryl Jordan-Smith, Global Vice President, Vertical Industries and Accounts at Red Hat. Daryl, very good to see you again. Nice to see you again, Guy. We're going to be discussing the increasing focus of telecom service providers on edge computing. Now, they've been exploring the potential of the network edge for, for several years now. Um, but the arrival of 5G is, is promising to open up new business cases. But What's the reality? Where are telecom service providers on their journey to the edge? Well, the journey to the edge is well on its way, as you said. They've been looking at the technology for at least a couple of years. Um, they're beginning now to deploy their 5G-based infrastructure, and that's beginning to roll out in various regions around the world. Um, what's important to edge, to a lot of the service providers we're engaging with, is the opportunity it provides them to take back the cloud. Uh, a lot of the data that they um, will have or have access to will be at the edge of the network. They can apply a lot of telemetry, the, um, data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, augmented reality-based applications and services uh, by realizing uh, the opportunity to move compute, storage, and networking to the far edge of their network. And where are you seeing the most innovation at the moment? Well, a lot of the innovation that we're seeing is around uh, artificial intelligence, looking at actually how uh, service providers in a trusted manner can use the data at the edge of the network either to self-heal their network or provide uh, developers in the communities from an open source perspective in particular the ability to develop uh, new applications and services that would sit at the, at the edge of the network. So what do you believe it is that, what, why, what separates the innovators from the rest of the pack? Well, it's really, um, from my perspective at Red Hat, it's, it's around open source. Um, the, the ability to innovate on a common platform faster than any time before, uh, and anyone that can actually leverage and tap into uh, the value proposition open source has in terms of the millions of developers out there, uh, the way that the code itself is actually evolving very rapidly, almost in real time. Uh, Kubernetes itself, a containerization technology, uh, actually revs its itself every three months. Um, so developers can really build on a, a common platform uh, and, and innovate on top of it rather than working from the ground up, uh, maintaining as a, a legacy-based platform as they, as they develop the, the new applications as, as, as 5G uh, promises to give them. So an open strategy is therefore critical to success? Absolutely. We think um, the ability to be open, uh, the ability to have a horizontal platform, the ability to containerize those workloads uh, to realize real cost reductions in, in the marketplace. And uh, you know, all those business cases are, are being developed at the moment. And there's a lot of market research that suggests you know, just in cost reduction terms, containerization of network uh, elements itself is going to realize 10 to 20 percent cost reduction. And we have more than 60 percent of all of our telcos out there uh, looking at uh, containerization across their network infrastructure building on what they've done in terms of virtualization. So that's particularly important to us because we help them in both those journeys and we evolve um, our platforms with that and give them a horizontal uh, capability that gives them maximum reach to the larger developer community and the applications that sit out there that they can run over their network infrastructure. Now, there are, unfortunately, some different interpretations of what open means out there in our industry. What are the key criteria for truly open infrastructure? And why does that true openness matter? Well, true openness really matters to Red Hat because everything we do is contributed to the upstream community projects that make up a lot of this infrastructure that's being deployed in the telecommunications marketplace. So, for example, we don't ever create a special version of Kubernetes for telecommunications companies. We believe in making Kubernetes good for the telecommunications industry. So we want to build and contribute everything upstream first is, uh, is, is, is something that we talk a lot about at Red Hat. So everyone in the community has access to the latest code and innovation that sits out there and isn't forked into a different direction. Um, we think that is a key to both innovation and the community that uh, we're trying to address. 
One of the interesting areas we see a lot about at the moment is the VRAN. Why is virtualizing the radio access network important to the edge? Well, because it actually reduces the time to market uh, by nearly 60% of delivering new services at the far edge of the network. It enables the, you to more cost effectively manage that infrastructure. So we're seeing uh, total cost of ownership savings of between 30 and 40%. Um, we are actually very engaged with a larger ecosystem of uh, virtualized radio access network software uh, vendors in that space. So you can deliver that all in software at the far edge of the network and with our platform you can then drive choice in terms of applications and services that sit on top of that so really you know vran as sometimes it's called virtual radio access network is a mechanism for uh, telecommunications companies to uh, software enable what was typically at the far edge of their network very hardware vertically orientated uh, hardware and, and software stacks why is security important in disaggregated networks um, security is particularly important in telecommunications infrastructure because you're actually running uh, applications and services which are mission critical, not only to the running of the network, but to humans' lives. Um, you can imagine a 911 service or a 999 service, depending on where you're from, and not being able to get an ambulance to where you need to be because there's a security problem uh, within your network. You could be a retailer and actually having an edge compute platform in your retail store and all of a sudden, all of the credit card records disappear from that. At Red Hat, we build everything on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, it's a secure Linux. We have a, uh, a set of uh, technologies in that space, uh, which are federated uh, through security agencies like FedRAMP and ANSI, which is a uh, US and European uh, standard of security. And we build everything on top of that platform. It's why RHEL is so important to us when we look at containerizing workloads and putting uh, virtual machine-based applications together. In addition to that, one of the other things we like to, to really talk about is the fact that you know, containers themselves are um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're basically an operating system with a series of libraries which are actually condensed in a way to run the necessary elements of the application. So we know with RHEL, because it's been built on a secure-based operating system, that container is secure. So we really, really have a lot of work to do with our, with our telecommunications companies in terms of showing them the secure nature of, of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, um, as well as you know, the real-time natures of Red Hat Enterprise Linux for real-time based applications and services at the edge. Well, Daryl, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.